So today I'm at the New Breeze Cemetery in Emmett Township, Battle Creek, Michigan. And this cemetery was established in 1840. So we're going to explore some history today. Come along and join me. New Breeze Cemetery is located in Emmett Township off of B Drive North, right near the intersection of Nine Mile Road. According to the sign at the front gate, the cemetery was established in 1840. We're going to begin our journey today looking at the story of William Newbury, whose family name the cemetery is named after. William Newbury was one of the original pioneers in Calhoun County and also one of the first successful farmers in Emmett Township. He was born in 1817 in Byron, New York and spent his boyhood years on his father's farm. At the age of 14, he began to work for a neighbor's farm and remained there for two years. He then moved to Elba, New York and resided there until he came to Michigan in 1837. He made his journey through Canada with a four-horse team and nothing but $6 to his worldly possession on him. He arrived in Jackson and rented some land and eventually purchased his first 40 acre farm. In 1842, he exchanged his Jackson County property with a land speculator for 320 acres of wild, unimproved land in Emmett Township. He erected a log cabin on the property and then moved his family from Jackson in 1844 to the homestead and the farm where he would remain on for the next 50 years until his death in 1895. In 1851, he built a sawmill just two miles from his farm, which became known as the Newbury Mill. In 1840, while in Jackson, he married Miss Amelia Cranson on Christmas Day, and together over the years, they had two daughters. In Washington Gardner's book, A History of Calhoun County, he mentions that starting as early as 1838 in Emmett Township, the township became known for its wheat raising capacity. And William Newbury is mentioned as one of the early successful farmers following this period. To learn more about this farming period and the success of the harvest, you should look at my video, A History of the Golden Harvest, which I'll put a link to in the video description below. William Newbury passed away in 1895 at the age of 78. His wife Amelia passed away three years prior to him in 1892. William Newbury was not the only member of his family that made the journey from New York. His father, Isla Newbury, was a native of Massachusetts, born in 1787, and he came to live with William in Emmett Township in 1854, along with his wife, Irene, William's mother. Isla was the son of an Elias Newbury, who was a native of Massachusetts and born in 1751, and he was the son of John Newbury, who was said to be one of the old colonial families of New England that founded Williamstown, Massachusetts. His name shows up in the vital records from 1907, recorded by the Historical Society there. He was a farmer, and when the Revolutionary War broke out, he joined the Continental Army. John Newbury died in 1784. Isla was not only a farmer, but a skillful carpenter, blacksmith, and harness maker. He usually left the management of the farm to his other family members and spent the greater part of his life here in Michigan as a contractor and builder. He built many large buildings in the county and frequently had over 40 men working for him. He also served as the Justice of the Peace for many years. Isla passed away in 1871. His wife Irene passed away a year before him in 1870. Both are buried here at the Newbury Cemetery. William had a brother named Elias who was also buried in this cemetery. His obituary described growing up in Byron, New York and traveling with his parents to Michigan in 1836, one year prior to William and settling in Jackson, Michigan. Elias would have been 10 years old when he made that journey in 1836, a year before William, who was 20 years old when he came through Canada. However, both William and Elias moved to Emmett Township in 1844, Elias being 18 years old at the time of that move. He became a landowner in 1849 at the age of 23. Elias had obtained his early education in a log schoolhouse in the country sitting on slab benches on wooden pins. His time in school was limited to the winter months, however, as he spent his summer in the harvest fields. While living in Jackson for two summers, he carried the U.S. mail from Jackson to Charlotte and other points along the rural route spanning 90 miles. 
the country at that time being wild and uncultivated with plenty of deer and other native forest animals as common sites. Elias would eventually become one of the most prosperous farmers in Emmett Township, retiring several years before his death in 1907. There are many members of the Newbury family buried here in this cemetery. In 1909, they held a family gathering of over 100 members in attendance. And the cemetery, of course, is located on the northwest corner of what once was William Newbury's land, adjoining another parcel owned by other members of his family. Now let's visit the Spalding family. According to a history of Calhoun County, Jacob Spalding receives the mention as being one of the first of a small handful of settlers into Emmett Township between 1831 and 1836. There were no newspapers in Battle Creek during this time of his death in 1840, so there's very little mention of him. But on the back of his headstone, there's an inscription that reads, Spalding, 1836, Pioneers, 1962, from Lisley Broom County, which was in New York, to Beetle Lake took 37 days by boat and ox team. Family and 50 descendants are buried in this cemetery. So Jacob had three sons, and they're mentioned in this article that I found in 1894, indicating their arrival in 1836 with their father. Their names are listed as Allen, Leonard, and Albert. Allen was actually John Allen Spaulding, and he had a 236-acre farm off of Bee Drive. He was born in 1816, and he died in 1886. I didn't find much else about him other than he was a prosperous farmer in the community. Albert North Spaulding was born in 1820. He was the middle brother, and he also owned a farm that was around 135 acres adjacent to his brothers, John Allen. Now, Albert served on the school board for many years, finally resigning in 1885. He was married to Polly Ann Ganog in 1846, and together they had nine children. Albert passed away in 1897. Now the third brother mentioned before as Leonard was actually Neerum Leonard Spaulding. And he was born in 1824. And also, you guessed it, he was a farmer. He owned about 300 acres and his farms were connected to his brother's properties, as you can see here on this map. He was just 16 years old when his father passed away, being the youngest of the three brothers. During his youth, he had no time for idleness, so he worked on his father's farm. Until the age of 20, he bought a farm of his own. He married Lucy Thurston, and together they had six daughters, two that died in infancy, and a third one who died as a young woman. Neerum was considered by those who knew him as a sturdy pioneer, and was said to be working his farm right up to the day he died in 1906. So just to show how tight-knit this community was, Catherine was a sister of Alan, Albert, and Neurum, and she married one of the men in the Newbury family. Also, one of the schools in Emmett Township was named the Spalding School. The Spalding Schoolhouse existed on the corner of Bee Drive North and Beetle Lake Road and was built in 1868. It was donated by the Spalding family. The schoolhouse was demolished in 1978. Harper Creek Schools is located on that same site in present day. I wanted to briefly interrupt to say thank you to everyone who's been a subscriber to my channel and has offered me encouragement as I've been on this journey. If you like the work that I do here and would like to support the channel, in the links in the description below, you can set up a direct donation or a reoccurring donation through my LibrePay account. I also have a merchandise store where you can get great designs like my new Explore Michigan, Explore History hoodie, which is my favorite. My dog Blue was born on Valentine's Day, so now through his birthday you can get an extra 15% off by using the offer code VALENTINE. Don't thank me, thank Blue. Now let's get back to some more history. Another family plot in this cemetery is the Haddocks. I didn't find a tremendous amount on this family, but I'm going to include it here because it has a connection to some of the other family members I've already covered. Francis James Haddock was born in 1826. 
in East Aurora, New York, and came to Michigan as a young man. He was a pioneer farmer, and he married Julia Amanda Newbury in 1853. Now, Julia was the last of 14 children and was born in Elba, New York in 1833. She is the youngest sister of William Newbury. Her father was Isla Newbury, who also resided in Elba, New York, prior to coming to Michigan. William arrived in 1837, and Julia's obituary states that she arrived in 1848 with her parents, first arriving in Jackson before moving to Emmett Township. So she arrived with her parents many years after William had already arrived and become established. After Francis and Julia were married, they lived for a brief time in Michigan City, Indiana, and then in the city of Battle Creek. They then owned a farm in Newton Township until 1865, and then they moved to another farm in Penfield, which they remained there until their deaths. Together they had nine children, and Francis died in 1883, and Julia, who was regarded as a devoted mother and friend and a wonderful neighbor, died in 1913. One of their sons, William, is also buried in this plot. He moved to California in his later years and died out there in 1949. His body was returned to Battle Creek to be buried here alongside his parents. This next marker I'm including here, even though there wasn't much available on the lives of this couple, there is a connection to others that I featured in this video. E. Ron Webster was born in 1811 and married one of the daughters of Isla Newbury, Nancy Marie, in 1835. They lived in Johnston Township for many years, but had family on both sides in Emmett Township. Nancy Webster passed away in 1880 and E. Ron passed away in 1887. It was said in his brief obituary that he died of cancer and that he was highly esteemed in the community. Nancy was two years older than her brother William Newbury. Not surprising, their headstone marker is very similar to other members of the Newbury family. This last story has some more interesting connections to colonial America, as well as some of the early Quaker heritage in Calhoun County, but also is a tale of a seemingly successful pioneer that ends in tragedy. Andrew J. Lapham was regarded in his day as a highly respected and enterprising farmer and stockman in Calhoun County. He descended from an old pioneer family in Wayne County, Michigan, where he was born in 1832. His father, David Lapham, was from New York and was born in 1806. His family arrived in America during the colonial period from Wales, England. Andrew's grandfather was Ethan Lappin, a Quaker preacher who had become well known in Wayne County when he relocated there in 1826, becoming one of the first settlers in that part of Michigan. According to a book called Portrait and Biological Album of Calhoun County, which was published in 1891, the Lapham family in America sprung from two brothers in the colonial days that migrated here from England. That would make Andrew Lapham a distant cousin of Eldred Jerry Lapham, a senator from New York who served between 1875 and 1881, but perhaps even more interesting, a distant cousin of Susan B. Anthony. And if you travel forward in time to actor Christopher Lloyd, perhaps most well-known from the Back to the Future franchise. The information on Susan B. Anthony and Christopher Lloyd came from Wikipedia, which is not always accurate, but I thought I'd include it. But let's return to the Laphands of Emmett Township. David Lapham moved to Calhoun County in 1852 and settled in Emmett Township. Andrew remained in Wayne County and lived with his aunt until he was 18 years old and then moved in 1853 to Calhoun County. He then attended two years of select school in Harmonia over in Bedford Township. Following that, he purchased a 60-acre farm with his older brother and became a successful farmer and stockman. He was married twice, first in 1852 to Mary Drake from New York, 
She died young, and their only child from that marriage, a son named Eddie, passed away at the age of 15. He married again to Clara Doty in 1890, and she was from a pioneer family here in Emmett Township. They never had any children. He was known to remain independent in politics and ultimately served as the township supervisor for three years, and later as a justice of the peace for 12 years. I came across a notice in 1875 where he was overseeing a coroner's inquest as justice of the peace and his brother Ethan was on the jury of the same inquest. How often do you see that happen? After retiring as justice of the peace he served as a constable for two years. Despite what would seem like a prosperous and fulfilling life, Andrew Lapham in 1904 came in from working in the fields and drank a bottle of carbolic acid. He then lay down on some hay to die. His brother not soon after heard him shouting in pain and came to his aid. He told his brother, Ethan, I have done it. Ethan, of course, in a panic, ran to get a doctor in town, but by the time he had returned, they found him dead. He was 71 years old when he committed suicide. Now, the newspapers of the time make his dying seem very melodramatic, but a part of me has to wonder, was it really a suicide? I guess we'll never really know. Little records exist other than these newspaper accounts. And I didn't see any mention of an inquiry in the following days in the newspapers. He was buried just two days later, which was very common in those days. I became curious about his suicide as he was a Quaker, also known as the Society of Friends. I tried to look into the theology of Quakerism regarding the subject of suicide, and the only mention I could find referred only to the Quaker viewpoint on death and dying, which they considered to be a very personal and spiritual journey. Now there was a mention in the article about his death that he had been in poor health in one of the articles, but that seemed contrary to the fact that he was also reported as having spent a whole day working in the farm with other men and seemed to be in good spirits. One could also interpret the meaning of the statement, Ethan, I have done it, to mean he drank it by accident, which would have been hard to comprehend, but perhaps he mistook the bottle for something else. Instead of looking at the label, just chugged it like Gatorade. You know, like when he was thirsty coming in from the field. Might be a bit of a stretch. As kind of a bizarre coincidence, on the front page of the newspaper, right next to his article, was a cartoon depicting a man overlooking the McCamley Bridge in downtown pointing at a dead cat. Does that strike you as strange? So that's going to do it for today's journey through history at Newbury Cemetery. If you like today's video, please take a minute to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and share the video with others. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Did you guys hear something?